Hello and welcome everyone, I'm Willem and this is a 2004 Mercedes-Benz SL55 AMG and today I'm going to review it. I'm going to start off talking a little bit about the history of the car, have a look at the exterior and the interior and then take it for a drive. If you have not done so yet, please subscribe to my channel, I need more subscribers to get more cool cars, so please go ahead and subscribe and also give the video a like if you enjoyed it. I borrowed this specific car from Club 9 in Cape Town, they're situated on the corner of Strand and Brea Street, they offer a wide selection of cool cars and classic cars for sale, so if you're in the area, do pop by. So the Mercedes SL55 AMG was first introduced in 2002 as the AMG Sports version of the standard Mercedes SL and they made the specific 5th generation one up until 2008 with the introduction of the new one. So I've always viewed the Mercedes SL as a car for people who permanently have sweaters tied around their necks or people with partners half their age. Not that there's anything wrong with that of course. I'm specifically referring to the modern SLs or the current generation ones. It seems that as soon as you look two generations back the cars become a lot cooler and the age really really well. One of the reasons I think the Mercedes SL55 AMG is becoming a little bit more appealing is because it's very closely related to the Mercedes SLR. You'll see some features that resembles that car, you'll see these little shark vents on the side here and you'll also see the headlamps up front which also looks almost identical to the Mercedes SLR but the main reason is the engine. So this car shares pretty much the same engine with the Mercedes SLR. It's got a 5.4 litre supercharged V8 AMG engine. This one puts it around 500 horsepower whereas the one in the SLR puts it around 600 which is quite a big difference especially in 2004. So the first thing we're looking at the front of the car, these headlamps that I mentioned before, that's the same as in the McLaren SLR. Mercedes actually put these headlamps in quite a few cars. They've got them in the AMG, um, the black versions as well, which came out in 2007. And I think these headlamps age really well. I'm quite a fan of them. And I think they work with this car. And they're definitely one of the better looking things on this car. So what you'll also notice when looking at the car from the front are these flaring wheel arches to show that it's an AMG uh, performance version, not the standard Mercedes SL. I think that works really well with this car to show that it's carrying a little bit fatter tire underneath and to show that it's sporty. You'll also notice these beautiful wheels. I think these wheels really do this car justice. It's one of the better, better looking ones, definitely better than the standard ones. Um, it's got these big spokes and I think it really fits with the AMG car and it does this car justice. Then looking at this car's bonnet or hood, you'll see that it's a massive long sloping front hood which is obviously the style of the SL Mercedes cars, um, showing that there's a big engine under the bonnet. You also have these little vents here at the top which is also like the shark like vents you have on the side there and they are actually open because they need to cool the massive 5.4 litre engine under the bonnet. And let's take a look at that engine bay. So in opening up the Mercedes SL55 AMG's engine bay, it reveals this beautiful 5.4 litre supercharged V8 Mercedes engine. This engine is definitely the car's party piece and if you're buying one of these, you're buying it for the engine. Obviously shared with the McLaren SLR of course. I just love the way it looks and it's just a very, very good looking engine. This one is also made by a guy called Volker Haag. Not sure if I pronounced it correctly, but thanks Volker. So seeing that it is a convertible car, you would expect this car to not have a lot of luggage space, which is actually the case. There is, however, a little bit more than I anticipated this car would have. You've got this little cover that you pull out and any luggage you can fit underneath, um, you can still put the top down while driving, which I think is actually should be enough for most people for a weekend trip or so. So when opening up the door of the Mercedes SL55 AMG, you'll notice a few weird things, to me at least. This little piece of aluminium plaque that's sort of stuck onto the door here, I just think it's a little bit strange. I'm not really entirely sure why they did it. They probably thought it looked cool or it looked more expensive. You'll also see this sort of aluminium part that runs all the way down the door, which continues the sort of theme this car has. Another cool thing that you'll still see in AMGs nowadays is this little AMG plaque here before you step into the car and it just shows AMG to show that you're stepping into an AMG car. So the first thing that I noticed when sitting in the 2004 Mercedes SL55 AMG is this light grey interior space. Now I know this car is 15 or 16 years old now already but this grey interior does not do this car any justice at all and I know this car is old but I think the black interiors which would, would look a lot a lot better and I know I've also read up that some of the black interiors are worth almost twice the price because of the interior just looks way better in black it easily looks dirty this light interior and obviously if you had the choice you wouldn't opt for this but this is what this car has so one of the other main things you notice in this car is how many buttons there are there are buttons all over the place there's buttons to control your seat on the right hand side here for ventilated and heated seats the steering wheel is covered in buttons the instrument panel is covered in buttons i mean 
I think it was that era in 2004 when people just thought, let's just throw buttons all over the place to make it more luxurious. And that's exactly what Mercedes did with this car. So for 2004, this car was actually very advanced. It had some very advanced features, like I said, the seat warmers, the ventilated seats, which you didn't see a lot in that time. One of the funniest features to me as well that they did in the early 2000s and late 90s is put a phone in this car. You'll see if you lift this up, it's got a classic Nokia phone here which it looks like it was never used before and I can't imagine who would use it but it still looks cool you can still impress your friends with that um, probably nowadays because no one sees phone cars anymore um, you'll also note it's got parking distance control in the front there which is something you didn't see a lot I mean it's really filled with luxuries these seats are actually extremely comfortable when we drove here to the spot I sat in them it's got adjustability all around it massages you, it grips you, there's lumbar support. It's really, really nice and luxurious seats. Um, and I think it's one of the car's best features on the interior, at least. Then looking in front of me, I see this Mercedes steering wheel. You'll notice that Mercedes have come quite a far way in designing steering wheels, especially with the modern ones, which looks completely different from this. Like I said, there are buttons on the steering wheel to control some features you have in the front there, your trip computer, your volume knob to answer or put down the phone which is quite still modern for the era but this steering wheel doesn't feel as sporty at all as the modern ones but it still does the job you'll also notice it's got a little buttons here at the back one for down shifts and one for up shifts it's still buttons it's not the paddle flaps um, that you have with all modern Mercedes nowadays but the fact that they still put it there means that yeah they wanted to show that it is a bit of a sporty car and that you can actually change your own gears so looking at the instrument cluster above the steering wheel you'll notice this beautiful sort of Alcantara covering um, for the instrument panel I quite really like that I think it looks really good in this car um, you'll notice the speedometer on the left hand side there it goes all the way up to 330 kilometers per hour which is pretty insane in a car like this and then you'll also see um, the rev counter on the right there which goes all the way up to 7,000 revs and then the fuel gauge and the oil temperature gauge as well so in the middle here you'll see the screen this screen was put in aftermarket it's got features like bluetooth and stuff it's not the original mercedes screen um, which was a little bit very old and dated it's from 2004 of course below that you'll see your um, temperature controls your climate controls and then looking below the center console there you'll see this gear lever with the engine start stop which actually was an extra you had to opt for um, that this previous owner obviously did and then at the bottom there you'll see a button that says abc sport um, which is quite strange if you don't know what it is it's active body control which makes this car roll a lot less in the corners to make it more luxurious and ride as soft as you can you also see the suspension setup here which you can add and make softer as well if you want to lift the car up and this car was intended to be a luxurious cruising car and that's what most of these buttons are for so talking about the practicality of this car that continues the trend of buttons everywhere there's a button to open your cubbyhole there's a button to open this little pocket here by your armrest that pops out and pops back in then obviously at the back here if you look there's two little storage compartments here which also opens with a button um, so they just went absolutely crazy with the button another button i want to show you is this button that you push which open up the uh, opens up a cup holder as well so yes Mercedes really went crazy with the buttons and the last button I want to show you is how over engineered this car actually is I mean it's got a button to move the seats forward but it takes an absolute age check it out so that concludes my interior and exterior view of the car now it's time to take it for a drive So when driving the 2004 Mercedes SL55 AMG, the first thing that I think any person would notice is how smooth the ride is. This car rides immensely smooth. There's a lot of small bumps and crests and stuff on this back road, but I can't feel anything when driving with this car. It's really quite a ridiculously wafty feeling. I think these seats also help a lot. They're really plush. I mean, you can get a massage while you're driving this car and it just feels like the perfect long-term cruiser. So the next thing you'll notice is the instantaneous power this car delivers. Once you put your foot down, it just drags you along. I mean, that supercharger just kicks in and it's the most amazing feeling. Um, with a car being 16 years old, you'd think that power wouldn't be as instantaneous as it is, but it really, really is. And it's just one of the most addictive feelings ever. That's such a crazy feeling.
So even this car is a big AMG car with obviously AMG performance and an AMG engine. It's not necessarily a very sporty car. This car does have a manual mode, which you select down here. And once you've pressed it, you think, okay, great. There's a little two paddles here. You can drive the car and switch your own gears, but really it's not that fast. I mean, if you drop it down, it's a little, it takes almost a second for it to really kick in and then going into a higher gear as well. There's a small little delay, which you sort of expect. And especially the older Mercedes cars are quite used to, are quite known for not having great gearboxes, especially in the AMG cars. In the modern Mercedes, however, that's changed quite a lot. The modern Mercedes have got their gearbox down to, I mean, probably one of the best gearboxes in the business. And it's a much more of a sports car than it is a cruising car. This era of Mercedes were a little bit different, where these cars were more meant for to be cruising on long roads, driving fast on the autobahn and not really something that you're going to take out for a track day especially not a big luxurious car like this this car does weigh two tons which is absolutely massive so this car's 5.4 liter engine puts out around 500 brake horsepower and around 700 newton meters of torque which is enough in this car even though it weighs two tons it's actually carrying the power quite nicely so this car is 0 to 100 kilometers per hour and just below five seconds and it tops out at an immense 325 kilometers per hour which was unheard of in 2004. This was actually the fastest automatic car of the time when it was released in 2002 um, and it actually beat the Ferrari of the time and some other Porsches as, as well. I think the Porsche GT2 RS, this car actually had a faster top speed than that which is really crazy considering this is a big bulky luxury cruising car. So I've switched the car to manual mode again. Let's try and see if these gears can play along. Top to second. Oh. That V8 noise with that supercharger is so, so, so addicting. It's such a beautiful sound. Completely love it. Here's a nice corner. Let's drop it a gear. Woo. Wow, this car is really fast for a 16 year old Mercedes. I mean, big luxury cruising car, it is, it really boggles the mind how fast this car is, it's really crazy. So this car currently retails for 380,000 Rand, which sounds like a lot of money when you look at the physical car and you look at what you're getting. Um, it is quite an old car, it's 16 years old now, but if you consider this car was probably around one and a half million Rand when it was released back in 2004, 380,000 Rand is quite a bit of a bargain. Unfortunately, the car itself isn't worth 380,000 Rand. You're paying for that beautiful 5.4 liter supercharged engine in the front. That thing is an absolute brute, and it's the main reason why anyone would buy this car. The other reason for it is, of course, you can go and brag and say, well, that's actually the McLaren, Mercedes McLaren SLR's engine from back in the day, which is pretty cool. I think that's viewed nowadays as one of the most greatest supercars or hypercars, at least, of all time. On that note, thanks for watching the review. I've got a little bit of open road ahead of me where I'm going to try and put some of the power down. What a crazy, crazy sound.